I was afraid of losing my heart. You wanted them to remember you. Like, hey, I have a baby, but I'm here. Don't forget about me. After I had my first child and I came back and I was fit, I had to encourage the younger dancers to see that you can have family and you can come back to dancing. But when you have a newborn, your body really isn't yours in a lot of ways. The breastfeeding was the biggest challenge for me. Begonia would go to work and do her training and do her morning rehearsals and then get home and then express milk at home for the baby. Up to my second pregnancy, I was aiming to do Juliet. So I worked really, really hard. And I tore the muscle in my car. And I didn't make it. So the fact that I didn't do it, I felt, I felt I'd let them down. I feel guilty all the time. If I'm home and I get to spend time with them, then that's, amazing but then I'm not earning money and also I'm not doing something for myself but if I do work then I feel guilty I'm not with the kids I think that's motherhood a day can't go by without feeling guilty about something I knew there was a time limit to have a baby but there was just no space between me and Bali it was impossible for me to have a baby Misato is the first mother to try to come back because all other dancers who wanted to have a family, they sort of decide to leave the company. I'd love to combine the two and still be performing, still doing my job. There just isn't enough hours in the day to do both. It's something that I don't want to think about it, but there is going to be an end. I don't want to have to choose, but more and more I'm seeing that I do have to choose. Being a mom is a full-time job, and the type of mother I want to be is, you know, 100% there for my kids and giving them everything. I'm blessed to say that I can do both, that I don't have to choose one or another. I am able to be a mother and be a ballerina at the same time. I think uh, dancers should be able to choose to have a family. Is it possible to be a ballerina mother? I think it depends on who you are. Congratulations again. We're so excited, Eliza, to have this film as the winner this year. We believe it tells such a beautiful story uh, about these unintended consequences of our progress, the opportunity for us as women to show up in more places around the world, to live out our dreams fully, uh, and still contending with these challenges uh, by the nature of being women. Um, I will welcome Eliza to share a few words. One moment. Hello, my name is Eliza Schroeder, and I'm the director of Colliding Forces, Mothers in Ballet. And I'm here to say that I am so extremely excited about having won this wonderful award. And in general, I've been so thrilled to be um, part of this year's Women's Voices Now Film Festival, which is such a fantastic festival with so many amazing films. So I cannot tell you how pleased I am that not only have we been selected for the festival, but also to have won this incredible prize. It really, really means a lot to me and to the whole team behind the film. And Colliding Forces has been a, a labor of love. Um, Basically, we've made this film for all these incredible women that you have seen in the film and whose journey you've hopefully um, enjoyed. It's been such an honor to work with these incredible women from around the world, these incredible artists, athletes and dancers, and of course, mothers. Um, so thank you very much and um, all the best wishes from London. And that does it for our 2024 Women Voices Now Film Festival Awards Ceremony. I'll invite Heidi back to the stage to say a few words to close us out. And just thank you all so much for being a tremendous audience, for being an incredible community of filmmakers. We're so, so grateful um, for your participation today. And thank you so much for making this festival possible. Thank you, Chelsea.
I'll wait for my state. There we go. Chelsea, thank you so much. Um, our award ceremonies are always long ones. And I feel like that is one of the great assets of doing this online is that we're allowed to gather from all over the world and really hear from the filmmakers. I learned so much from everyone today. And I, I really enjoyed seeing the surprise in the faces of those who didn't expect to win. And um, filmmakers always have my most deepest, profound um, admiration for the work that you do for creating something from nothing and getting other people to come along board with you and somehow making something that is just doesn't exist yet into the world that you share with all of us. Um, in wrapping up, I just want to congratulate Chelsea Byers again for pulling off another film festival. She literally has to coordinate <clears throat> scores of individuals across the different time zones to make this all happen. There's so much behind the scenes work that goes into this. Chelsea, thank you again for bringing together incredible groups of people from the previewers to the jury members to the filmmakers in order to share their stories and their opinions and judgments of all these films. I wish we could have prizes for all of our filmmakers because they're all truly award-winning in my view and and would be in, in the eyes of all of the world. I also want to make a special mention of thank you to our jury members. As, as Cindy mentioned, it was really over 24 hours of films that have to be watched and it is a huge emotional investment. It is not, um, it is not fun necessarily, but the work must be done and the filmmakers must get their feedback and the prizes must be awarded. So thank you for that dedication, that compassion, that determination, that investment in our work. I am tremendously grateful to all of the jury members for, uh, for everything that you have done. I also want to invite all of you who are joining us, if you happen to be in Los Angeles on May 8th in West Hollywood, we will have be having an evening focusing on women's sexual health and reproductive rights, which, um, as we know, is probably one of the most challenging rights that women are seeking to pursue in the world right now. We are, we are seeing a tremendous backslide in the progress we've made on bodily autonomy. So we need to have these conversations. We need to build empathy for women in the eyes of all people, even those who are women who would deny other women the right to their own bodily autonomy. It's not about telling someone what to do, it's about having the power to make the decision for ourselves. And so I'm looking forward to that event on May 8th and hope that you will join us. We will have um, our in-person film festival screening in September. We have lots of films in our film collection online.